Travel is back as many countries are reopening, and that's great news. Welcome to Currency Cast. My name is Austin McKinley. I'm the financial writer at Cantox and your host. In today's episode, we have the pleasure of welcoming Mark Padrosa. Mark is the global industry director at Cantox for the travel industry. So, a very warm welcome to you. All right, Mark, could you describe your activities at Cantox, please? Sure. I help OTAs, auto chains, DMCs, bed banks, wholesalers on managing currencies on their advantage. At the end, we try to leverage currency management automation on their favor. Right, and I, I take it that you also manage partnerships at Cantox, is that right? Exactly, indeed. Um, this is a super well-connected industry and everyone relies on partners to grow, and we are not the exception here. We partner with CRSs, channel managers, PMSs, even booking engines, so we can provide most of the value to our customers. Right, and you must participate in travel-related events, right? Also, also, this is something that is part of our day-to-day. Uh, we try to go to W2M, for example, in London, the world travel market. We also go to Fitur in Madrid. We also go to uh, ITB in Berlin, even this year is not happening. And this year we will, we will attend to the ATM, which is the Arabian travel market, because we think this is a really important market for us. Well, that's quite a schedule. Do you find sometimes the, right, the time to write articles on travel-related issues? I try from time to time to write something. Uh, the last one that I wrote, it was for Focuswire. Uh, and of course, it was related about currency management automation and how this is related to the, to the travel industry. Right. Okay, Mark, could you describe uh, to us a little bit what is Cantox's involvement in the recent IATA white paper on, um, on currency risk? Yes, uh, we are part of the financial think tank of IATA, the International Airline Travel Association. And they asked us to co-wrote also with Mastercard, Amadeus, Pisa and some other big names in the payments industry. This white paper that basically talked about how currency management automation can impact the competitive position of the airline industry at, at the whole. All right, now let's start the conversation about business process automation, automation in the travel industry and hedging and pricing with a foreign exchange rate. So let me ask you the following question. Do you think that the, um, the trend towards business process automation that, that is well in place started long before the pandemic, but the pandemic has only reinforced that, that trend? Yes, um, before it was more a narrative and the concept of automation was kind of we need to do it, but now it's a need. And we have seen that all these travel players that we were describing before, OTAs, um, tour operators, hotel chains, they are putting automation processes in place. And of course, this, is, this benefits us. All right. And now the question is, does that reflect mostly margin pressure? Or Mark, do you think that there are other factors at play here also? Margin pressure is one of them, uh, because uh, specifically, in the middle of the value chain for the travel industry, the ones that are basically buying and selling a product that is not even theirs, okay? Um, there is a lot, a lot of tight margins there. I mean, right. they, are, they, need to, they, need, they need to rely on automation of the processes. If not, they cannot secure that margins. But also, we are seeing a lot of new payment methods. And even because of the uncertainty of forecasting, there is a need of automation on the, on the forecasting phase of it. Right. I see that it's going to take us to hedging programs, especially micro hedging programs in the travel industry. But that would require, of course, and we're going to discuss that in more detail later on, but also a certain degree of automation, right? Because there's many hundreds, perhaps thousands of transactions involved there and many currency pairs to manage. Exactly. And, and this is why travel is one of our main or core industry at Cantox, because at the end, for the nature of the business, there are a lot of currencies involved, there are a lot of transactions, there are tight margins. And as, as I was describing before, if you don't have an automation or a micro hedging program in place, it's really, really difficult to, to rely on, again, on forecast and on manual processes to have the currency, currency risk managed properly. Right, so if I, if I understand you correctly, so management of, well, automated management of currency risk, more about 
value creation that just cutting costs, is that right? Yes, exactly. Uh, and this is something that uh, we try to, to explain to our, to our clients. Um, what we try to define is two different phases, right? So the first one is to have the actual currency and the current currency risk in place properly managed, okay? And once we have this under control, then we say, look, let's, let's look at phase two and let's leverage currencies in our advantage. And this is what we call the growth phase. Now let's talk foreign exchange risk management and especially pricing. Mark, would you say that the end of the catalog-based business model in travel is in sight? I think this is a fair bet. Uh, the conversations that we have with our clients and with the ones that have static pricing are more, they are more open, I would say, to embrace this dynamism and to embrace dynamic pricing. Right. Now, dynamic pricing and static pricing and catalog-based pricing, especially this last case, does that not create a lot of pricing risk that we discussed at another episode here of Currency Cast? Exactly. Uh, if you need to basically maintain your price for the whole campaign, even the whole year, you have this pricing risk, which is also called competitiveness risk. And at the end, uh, what we try to tackle is not just what is happening after the booking, but what is happening before the booking. This pricing risk is super important because at the end, if you are not tackling this well, you will not have the booking. Right. Now, how can you tackle pricing risk? Is it a, um, a time-based approach um, that, that you would recommend or rather perhaps a more of a data-driven and market-based approach? What would you say? Okay, the most common is the, what is called the time-based approach, as you said, right? So most of these dynamic pricing companies, these OTAs, these hotel chains, these tour operators, pet banks, they are using, for example, a 24-hour window to update their prices. They use an exchange rate and every 24 hours they are refreshing this, this exchange rate. As you said, there is another approach which is data-driven approach. Right, because uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like an arbitrary approach may not really protect you from, from FX risk. Is that right? Uh, if you use a, an arbitrary time-based criteria. At the end, why 24 hours and not 12 or 6 or 8 or 48, right? That's why we say it's a bit arbitrary. What we think it makes sense is to update this pricing, update this exchange rate for pricing your products, once it makes sense for the business to update it. And this means every time that there is a movement of a certain percentage, for example. Right. Now, um, I sometimes hear you at the office talking to clients and you mention another issue, another pricing related issue, namely using the forward exchange rate, that is to say, the uh, so. The, the difference between the, the spot rate and the forward rate for pricing purposes, especially in the event of favorable forward points. So for example, if you're selling in a currency that trades out of forward premium, and that's a technical topic, could you describe it a little bit for us? Yes, this is something that just a few players are, are embracing, are doing nowadays, but the ones that are pricing, taking into account forward points, forward rates, are the ones that are more competitive at all. At the end, what we try to do is say, look, if you have positive forward points, if you have the, the positive, the carry is positive for you, you can basically put this in your pricing. And, uh, and you be are, more competitive, is that right? Exactly. So creating more demands for your products in the end. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And this is something, as I said before, that just a few players are doing nowadays. So the ones that move <laughs> early are the ones that are getting the most of the reward at the end. Right, and that I find it so surprising, right? So few companies take advantage of the possibilities offered by well, uh, currencies, right? Especially spot or forward currencies for pricing purposes. Would you say that it reflects perhaps the lack of knowledge of foreign exchange risk management techniques or perhaps the lack of, of the tools, of the software tools? I think it's a mix of both. Uh, lack of knowledge, I wouldn't call it like this because it's quite technical to price in taking into account forward points and at the end we are all day looking at this. We are freaks of this, right? So what we try is to explain to our clients, we try to educate our clients, how can they improve their pricing strategies? As you said, there is also a lack of tools. We don't have many tools, many TMSs, many ERPs, many booking engines, many CRSs that are able to 
take into account forward rates in order to price. Right, we call that at Cantox a strong FX rate feeder, namely a system that with, and you can do that with currency management automation solutions, right? That would allow you to use whatever rate you need for pricing purposes, be the spot rate or the three month forward rate or even the six month forward rate. So would you agree that most TMS like that strong FX rate feeder? Exactly, and this, uh, exactly. And not just TMSs, uh, most of these software uh, companies that help travel operators to, to price in different currencies, they don't have this capability. And at the end, this is one of the issues that we try to, to tackle in, in Cantox. Right, but because in the end it's about selling more per unit of capital invested, right? You would be allowing companies to want to take advantage of pricing with those forward rates in the event, of course, of favorable forward points to make a more efficient use of invested capital. Is that right? Exactly. And this is one of the parts of basically what we call currency management automation. It's not just once the booking happened, it's what happens before the booking that is even more important because, as I was saying before, if you are not tackling this well through software tools that basically can automate the currency management, you cannot have a booking. All right, now we're going to tackle next embracing currencies. Now, what a topic, one that we really like at Cantor. Embracing currencies, that is selling in the currencies of your customers, buying in the currency of your suppliers, a very important topic. And let's discuss it here with Mark Padrosa, our guest uh, today. So, Mark, what are the, broadly speaking, the main advantages of embracing currencies, namely, again, so using more currencies in your business operations. At the end, is a way to, to be more competitive, and at the end, is a way to convert more, basically to sell more, which is directly impacting your bottom line, and this is something that I guess everyone in the industry is looking for. Right. Do we detect here maybe a different patterns between our B2C setups and business-to-business -business setups? Let's discuss, firstly, the basis to consumer setup and describe an, say, an OTA taking advantage of multi-currency offerings. Does that create a more of a, a more seamless buying opportunity that, that or experience that, that creates trust and reduces cost abandonment? Look, I would say that OTAs are more technologically advanced players than, for example, hotel chains. Um, let me put you an example. When I go to a hotel chain website and I try to book uh, room in the US and the hotel chain is from Spain, they are pricing their products, maybe they are displaying my currency, but at the end I need to pay in US dollars because the hotel is in the US. And instead of booking there, what I go, I go directly to the OTA and I say, I want to pay in euros and they allow me to pay in euros. And this of course helps increase um, English conversion and reduce card abandonment. Right. So, but hotel chains are, have an opportunity as well here, right? To, to, um, so to, to bypass intermediaries. Would you say that and drive more margin sales towards their website? Yes, it's a mix of both. It's you can increase margins, and you can increase sales. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it's a matter of the strategy of the company of saying, look, I prefer to increase my market share, and I will not put any kind, or even I will reduce my margins. Or if you think, of course, that you are going to sell the same, increase your margins. Right. Now that's what we call at Cantox, speaking the language of your customers and your suppliers. I'm talking about suppliers. Now, Mark, let's discuss B2B setups, perhaps, and especially, well, let's start with, with the contracting side. What are the, the benefits here in, in terms of buying in the currency of your suppliers? Look, what we say at Cantox is that with currency management automation, you can use currencies as a competitive advantage, even we call sometimes as a weapon for your business. Not really a weapon. Exactly. exactly. Uh, yes. Uh, let me explain you uh, how. No? When you are contracting and you are purchasing in the currency of your supplier, you are removing the problem for him of managing FX currencies, okay? Or managing FX, basically. So in other words, the, the, the foreign exchange risk never really vanishes, right? If you if you don't manage it, somebody else will. Exactly. The travel industry and the value chain of the travel industry is super broad. Okay, we have the from the from the individual until the hotel chain. There are many players in between. So the one that manages currencies in a proper way 
can be the one that can benefit the most of it. Right. I guess I'm sure you're going to well, tell, tell us about another benefit of embracing currency in the, in the contracting side, right? That would be you will have the opportunity to perhaps widen the range of, of potential suppliers if you are going to so to buy in, in local currencies, is that right? Exactly. At the end, it's a matter of giving options, right? So look, if you were constrained before of, ja or of just buying in US dollars or euros because these are the currencies that you are selling with, because we are seeing this a lot of times, we just purchase in the currency that we are selling. You are constraining constraining yourself, right. your business, yeah. right? So if you give options and you say, look, no worries, whatever the hotel, the, if maybe if you buy from another wholesaler or whoever is your, your supplier, you, you tell him, look, I'm going to be the one purchasing in your currency, no worries, I will manage this for you. And at the end, what you will remove is the markup that the financial department is putting. And at the end, you will contract um, cheaper and you can increase your margins there. Right. Now, what about the, the selling side? When you, we, here we discuss the, maybe more, the, more of the contracting side, so um, having access to better deals and uh, widen the range of suppliers. What about the, on the selling side? What's the benefit of selling in the currency of your customers? At the end, the benefit is an increase of conversion and a potential increase of margin on the current sales. Okay, And this is also, or I would say, even more interesting when we are talking in the B2B. In the B2C side, is, the example is clear. If I'm an individual, I want to purchase in my currency. If not, I go to the right. other website, right? But in the B2B side, as everything is connected through APIs, XML connections, third parties at the end, you don't have someone looking at your rates in a manual way. Once you remove the markup of the financial department that your customer, your client is putting, you become more and more competitive and the conversion the conversion rate increases a lot. Right, right. right. So if I understand you well, we're here the, the uh, embracing currencies, namely using more currencies in your problems, ends up uh, being a, a strategic imperative, right? It's not just a finance only topic. Would you agree with that? 100%. Look, what we try to tell to our customers is the following. What is happening before the booking is the responsibility of the commercial department, even the management, if you want. What is happening after the booking, okay, is responsibility of the financial department. So we have two kind of champions, no, in every in every uh, phase of uh, of the whole currency management cycle, and we try to tell them that the responsibility of the commercial department is to make sure that they sell more. And one way to do it is basically embracing currencies. Right, right, right. But I guess it takes us to the subject of, of foreign exchange risk, right? So, and especially how currency management automation solutions will allow us to take ownership of the resulting FX risk. We're just discussing with Mark Padrosa, Global Industry Director at Cantox for the travel industry. And Mark explained us, well, the benefits of embracing currencies, namely that selling in the currency of, of your customers, buying in the currency of your suppliers, in terms of not only of, of margin enhancing opportunities, but also boosting your competitive position. So that's quite a lot and quite convincing, but it raises the question mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but of the need for companies to take ownership of the corresponding foreign exchange risk. Exactly. And this is something that, of course, is, is not easy at the end, our goal is to educate them to take this ownership. I have to say this is one of my my main tasks right. nowadays. Uh, and this is something that is very, very well related with the need of software tools to put this in, in the in the table of the of the even the management of these companies. All right. So let's discuss the um, the methods used currently by uh, industry participants or travel industry participants to handle foreign exchange risk. And perhaps the first method is a non-method at all, right? It's lack of hedging. We've seen reports that about 77% of, of treasuries in Europe have reported loss of earnings due to unhedged, um, so exposures, currency exposures. What would you say to those who well, refuse to hedge? Look, this is, this is a funny conversation that we have sometimes because they told us usually that 
they don't hedge because they don't want to speculate. Because usually what happened, okay, is that they had some problems in the past and they, have a, they had a bad experience by hedging. The thing is that they were hedging based on forecast, okay? And what we try to change here is the mindset of those that say this, because Nowadays, what we will do with Cantox is hedging based on firm commitments, which is basically our sales, our bookings, that at the end happened at some point. Right. Now we're going to describe, of course, much, in, much, in much more detail the micro hedging for firm commitments, but let's still stay a little bit with it. So those um, practices that we seem outdated, so for example, what we call at Cantox ad hoc hedging or unsystematic hedging, and also, as you mentioned, right, the still static hedging idea for those who think that or still live in a catalog based pricing in travel. Yes. I know hedging is basically what what a trader would do, right? Uh, people is looking at the market, they are following the market and if they think they are, that it's a good time to hedge, they will do it, okay? So there is not that why you said, no, it's a, an systematic way of doing it. Okay, so what we try to say here is, look, this is not your job, okay? Your job is not trying to guess where the market will go. Your job is to sell the most rooms or the most flights or whatever is your product as possible. So when we confront with this kind of narrative, we try to tell them, look, let's focus on value added tasks and let's let the market movements and try to guess the market to other people, to traders, not to you. All right. All right. Now, what about so budget hedging still applying? Does that create a massive, say, triple risk? Namely, the risk of of being under or over hedged, the, the the huge pricing risk as well, and perhaps that risk of depending a lot on the, the accuracy of your forecast. Exactly. And 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 now. 100% agree and now it's even even more this risk is is even bigger why because the uncertainty <laughs> as all we know is part of our day to day and the ones that try to forecast the sales for this year or for next year uh, it's 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 quite difficult to do it right so hedging based on forecast which is basically what we call static no uh, static programs once you have dynamic pricing is not quite the best program to, to use. Right. I, I, you've seen that The Economist has uh, termed the year 2022 as a year of predictable unpredictability, right? So that creates a lot of challenges if you're going to base your, your hedging on, on static, uh, static programs. Mark, let's discuss a little bit more now the, what currency management automation solutions. We've seen those in terms of pricing, but let's discuss currency management auto automation solutions in terms of FX hedging, especially for the travel sector, in terms of those micro hedging, those automated micro hedging programs. Look, the majority of the business on the travel industry right now, as we were saying before, they have dynamic pricing. Okay, this is the first thing that is important to, to have in mind. The second is, there is a big uncertainty that we have discussed before of knowing what are going to be the sales. So the only reasonable way to hedge is to micro hedge these firm commitments, these bookings that happen at that point of time, of time taking into account the cancellations. Because this is something, right. this is, this is something that we discuss a lot with our clients. And that was what especially about, important in 20, uh, 2020, 2021, right? Exactly. This is something that when we start the conversations with our potential clients, they are like, what about the cancellations? No worries, we have a way to manage cancellations. Mm -hmm. But I understand that if you don't have a currency management automation tool or a software in place, it's really difficult to manage this. Right, especially if you have, like a, a course in travel, hundreds, even thousands of transactions per month and per year, and many uh, currency pairs to manage. Exactly, uh, it's the nature of the business, right? So we have a lot of currency pairs, we have a lot of transactions and not just this we have usually tight margins especially in the in the distribution side of the business so the players that are b2b bed banks and wholesalers okay and also in the in the flights business too they have tighter margins than the ones selling rooms right 
Now, what, how would you describe the, the degree of automation that is required for those tasks? Is it not something that might scare some people away? Definitely. I mean, this is something that, as I was saying before, they are a bit scared. I, I don't know if scare is the word, but it's, it's really difficult for them to visualize a way to manage this in an automated way. That's why part of our job is to educate them and then to show them how currency management automation can be the solution for this problem that they have nowadays. They, they think that they will need a lot of resources, they will need to invest a lot in terms of human resources and in terms of software tools, but at the end, the, the goal of automation is to basically to put people in the most value of the tasks and not in the tasks that don't, doesn't bring value to the, to the company in the day to day. Right, right, right. I think we, we're still seeing some people, well, that idea perhaps a little bit outdated, right, that the uh, foreign exchange risk management must be a resource intensive activity with lots of manual tasks being executed by members of the finance team with hidden costs in terms of bank fees. And, but I think this is um, is, is now outdated, I, I would say. So, Mark, describe a little bit more how currency management automation solutions um, so use micro-hedging programs and especially perhaps those, those corridors to manage the, the, the pricing risk and to use uh, so uh, stop-loss orders and profit-taking orders around the reference rate. Yes, so the first part is once the exposure arises, meaning once there is a booking, we need to receive that, right? We need to receive this exposure in the most automated way possible. And at the end, we have API connections with our clients. We receive this information in a live basis or every X amount of time. Uh, the frequency is defined by the client at the end. And then they define an FX policy. An FX policy that is 100% automated. They don't have to rely on looking at the market, guessing where the Euro US dollar is going to go, etc. Hey, but wait a minute uh, here, sorry, Mark. Yeah. Because you're, you're saying that the, um, so those business rules are 100% automated. Well, what's the role of the, of the finance people here? The role of the finance people is to invest time on putting these rules on. Oh, okay. Here is the, the, the strategy, the FX policy that they need to define. They need to invest time on that, not invest time on looking at the certain markets and certain Euro, Euro US dollar rates and thinking about that now it's the moment to buy or now it's the moment to sell. Right. We try to decouple for this, from this narrative of the, the, part, the finance department need to be traders or need to guess the market. No, they need to secure margins and they need to guarantee the margins. And then and basically they, they need to work hand by hand with the commercial department right. to be an enable, enabler of the business. Right, right. Now, describe a little bit, uh, please, uh, uh, Mark here in detail, those, so those boundaries around an FX reference rate with stop loss orders with profit taking orders that makes it so um so so dynamic for you to manage the currency risk look um once we receive the exposure once we receive the bookings we know which exchange rate was used to price that booking okay yeah. because usually we are the ones feeding this exchange rate for pricing as we discussed before yeah. okay then depending on a lot of different variables uh, margins uh, currency pairs the risk aversion of the company, we set up boundaries, we set up these limits, these stop losses and take profits. It can be for a bad bank, I don't know, maybe it's 0.5%, 0.5%. Right. For an adult chain that have bigger margins, maybe it's 3%, 3%. Okay? Mm -hmm. This means that if the market during the day does not move more than this certain percentage, right. we will not hedge. We will keep accumulating exposure. And once we reach one of these limits, we will hedge. Right. And in the meantime, it, it allows you to keep uh, prices relatively steady, is that right? It's, it's, you can have prices relatively steady, but these are two different things, right? So one is the part of pricing that can be dynamic at the oh, same time. Oh, yes. And then the stop loss and the take profit can be also dynamic too, because right. today you have sold at 113 and tomorrow you are selling at 113.50. Okay, right. and what we do is what we call the weighted average exchange rate, and we keep updating these stop loss and take profit, monitoring the market, and at the end, what we try to, what, what we try to, to, to get, and at the end, what we get is that 
with the less forwards possible for the treasury and for the financial department, we have the risk under control at, the, at, the, at, at all time. Right. And so what we're talking here is mostly so the cash flow uh, um, component of the of, of the FX risk in the transactions, right? But we could use uh, conceivably those micro hedging programs also to manage the, the the accounting exposure, right? Exactly. Usually, what we hedge is the bookings, is the film commitments, because it's where the the risk arises, right? right? If you start managing the risk from the moment of the invoice, from the moment of the what we call the balance sheet item, right. okay, maybe you have already lost three percent of your margin. Right. That's why. Uh, especially in the travel industry, it's important to manage the risk since the inception, since the moment of this sales order, purchase order, this film commitment arises. Right. And that, that I think, uh, takes us to the, the story of the, um, the relevance or not of the degree of forecast accuracy. Because if I understand you well, Mark, you're telling us here that you are hedging firm commitments, right? So uh, for sales or purchase orders, and that therefore these are no forecasts uh, at all. Is that right? Exactly. So we're taking, uh, in, in some in some way, the the problem of forecast accuracy out of the equation. Would yes. you say so? Exactly. This is what we what we what we achieve. We are very very accurate at the end because we we are not just treating bookings. Okay, we are treating bookings and we are treating cancellations. And at the end, the amount hedged is the amount that they will need at the cash flow moment, the collection or the payment moment, okay, when they need to pay or collect from the uh, or collect from the client. Right, right, right. So thanks very much, Mark, our travel expert here at Camtox, and thanks to the audience for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next episode of Currency Cast Travel Edition.